So ladies and gentlemen, the coronavirus sphere is all around and uh, I've got so many mails where people have told me to make a video on this and give a spiritual outlook to this as I do in almost all of my videos. So there you go, catering to your needs and expectations, I decided to make this video and today we shall discuss in short what are the things that we can learn from this virus yes even viruses teach things to us well essentially i think there are two lessons which we can learn the first lesson is that if you go to the root cause of this virus from where it has come all right so there are many different scientists who are saying different uh, places from which it has come well some of them are saying it has come from bats some of them are saying it has come from snakes some of them are saying it has come from some other some other bird right well either ways uh, if you go to the bhagavad gita there is there is a shloka which actually sums up this virus actually it doesn't speak of this virus, but it speaks of something very similar. Where is this shloka? This is in the 16th chapter, 23rd verse. All right, Bhagavad Gita 16.23. This is a very famous verse, very frequently quoted by uh, spiritual leaders. Ya shastra vedi musrijya vartate kamakarataha na sa siddhim avapnoti na sukham na paramgatim Oh, my mic is down, so I don't know how much good the audio will be. So let me catch it here. Okay, so the point here is, what does this shloka say? The translation is as follows. And for those who don't know what Bhagavad Gita is, Bhagavad Gita is uh, one of the most important books in the Vedic tradition, which was spoken, uh, which is a part of the big epic uh, Mahabharat where Lord Krishna had spoken these divine in, divine words to Arjuna. Mm -hmm. And the word Bhagavad Gita means it's the song of God. Gita means God. So it's like God is singing a song. Right? So the purport, uh, the translation says here that he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims, his or her it can be, attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination so i repeat he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination no perfection nor happiness nor supreme destination who who doesn't uh, obtain all this one who acts according to his own whims, discarding the injunctions of the scriptures. Right, so there's a very interesting purport to this verse and there's another similar verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam also where it is said, Mano rathena asati dhavato bahi Harava bhakta sitto mahadgunan that I always keep saying that shloka most of the time. So, these shlokas are very beautiful because they they give us a lot of clue about the uh, world, how it is running now, right? What what are the terrible calamities that uh, human beings have called upon themselves? So, why did I choose this verse? Okay, there are 700 plus shokas in the Gita. Why did I choose this verse? Well, because this verse gives us the attitude which the people of Kali Yuga, which we have towards ourselves towards God, towards the nature. Because uh, fundamentally, if you see in the scriptures, it is always advised or I, if I say prohibited, then people will say, oh, he's doing some moral policy, some religious lecture he's giving. So I, I won't say it's prohibited, but it is advised by the scriptures uh, to not eat meat. Yes, and that includes uh, meat, fish, eggs, any living object, right? Any living animal. So, I mean, of course, the plants are also living, but their consciousness is very low. 
all right and therefore the scriptures advise that you should eat plants because when you eat plants then uh, because their consciousness is very low then they they don't feel that much pain to the extent an animal feels because the animal's consci consciousness is very high it's very elevated so the amount of pain the animal feels it's uh, it is as good as human beings they feel all right but we the people of kaliyuga we have discarded the injunctions of the scriptures we have thrown out all these principles we have kicked out all these you know, we have uh, should i say that leave it <laughs> you know, we because of this what has what has happened you know? now some people are saying that oh actually humans have never eaten bats you know therefore, therefore this virus has come from the bats if we would have eaten then this would have never happened well then tomorrow you may say oh i i, I have uh, humans never ate snakes they have never eaten snakes so then one day you eat snakes and then there's another virus which comes out right so these are indications which mother nature which god is giving to this world that your situation is really precarious we are in a serious predicament because this is collective karma imagine just see the level of damage that has happened uh, hundreds and thousands and millions and billions of rupees us dollar euro everything is just collapsing everything is going down if this is the way uh, this goes on and if there is no direct cure you know italy is affected germany is affected very badly india luckily not that much us also not that much luckily but yes europe is very badly affected here and in my uh, company here they have declared home office you can you need to work from home for indefinite time nobody knows till when it could be one month two months six months even our senior authorities have sent us a message that uh, it could happen that we might shut down the company totally i mean uh, not the company sorry the office okay uh, and everybody has to work from home and nobody can come to the office so the situation is very bad so now let us not go to all this you know, from where it came i see people are you know blaming china or chinese or you know, see, that's not the point it has come from china but that, that that does not mean the the people from the other countries they are they are they are very holy people all right so the point here is not from where it has come where where it is going who has spread this that that's not the point here because it's uh, it is useless to discuss uh, after getting malaria my guru used to say uh, can you tell me which was the mosquito who gave me this malaria it doesn't make sense right because first you should get cured from the malaria and later on you if you want you can do research and you can go on finding which was that mosquito right so at an immediate level we we need to take the necessary precaution which you will be very well aware of uh, what the doctors are saying and so i will not speak on that so take care of yourself and um, at least as i said in that video also please uh, please shift to a vegetarian diet that is my humble request at least if if not for your whole life at least till till this virus is uh, not completely eradicated okay so therefore let us read this purport as described before the shastra vidhi or the direction of the shastra is given to the different castes and orders of human society everyone is expected to follow these rules and regulations if one does not follow them and acts whimsically according to lust greed and desire then he never will be perfect in his life in other words a man may theoretically know all these things but if he does not apply them in his life then he is known as the lowest of mankind in the human form of life a living entity is expected to be sane and to follow the regulations given for elevating his life to the highest platform but if he does not follow them then he degrades himself but even if he follows the rules and regulations and moral principles and ultimately does not come to the stage of understanding the supreme lord 
then all his knowledge becomes spoiled. And even if he accepts the existence of God, if he does not engage himself in the service of the Lord, his attempts are spoiled. Therefore, one should gradually raise himself to the platform of Krishna consciousness and devotional service. It is then and there that he can attain the highest perfectional stage, not otherwise. The word kama karata is very significant. A person who knowingly violates the rules acts in lust. He knows that this is forbidden, but, he's, but still he acts. This is called acting whimsically. He knows that this should be done, but still he does not do it. Therefore, he is called whimsical. Such persons are destined to be condemned by the Supreme Lord. Such persons cannot have the perfection which is meant for the human life. The human life is especially meant for purifying one's existence. And one who does not follow the rules and regulations cannot purify himself, nor can he attain the real stage of happiness. Alright, so this verse is very heavy, but that sums up what is going on. So, what are the injunctions of the scripture? The scriptural injunctions are very clear. When we know, when we read the Bhagavad Gita, when we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, then we then we will understand what are the injunctions of the scriptures. So, when we do not know them, and then we go on doing whatever we want, then we suffer. And now that that's the fun, you know, that uh, this this virus because. Uh, they say, there's a saying, you know, misfortune comes collectively. So now this virus is not going on uh, asking, hey, are you eating meat? Uh, oh, you, you, you are eating meat, so I will only catch you. No, it's not coming like that. It is going on catching anybody and everybody. Either you, are a, you eat meat or you don't. Irrespective of that, it is going to, it's attacking people. All right. So therefore, Till the time humans do not understand the importance of these scriptural principles, till that time Mother Nature will keep sending these signals. And when I am saying this, I am not saying in a dogmatic sense. It's, it's some bare human basic common sense that why should we kill animals and eat their blood? Yes. So that is why they say, you know, non-vegetarian. Actually, there is nothing as called as non-vegetarian. It's blood actually. Uh, imagine somebody asks you, you know, in the uh, if if you are somewhere in India and somebody says you know chicken uh, chicken butter masala they say but suppose it's written chicken blood butter masala so will you eat that well maybe you still eat because your senses are uncontrolled and you are just running behind meat like dogs but imagine how would you feel if it's written chicken blood butter masala or not chicken, maybe it's written, blood, butter, masala, chicken, butter, blood. How will you feel? It's horrible actually. But yes, that is what it is actually. And the slaughterhouses, when you see the amount of torture and pain they inflict to these animals, so they are heading in for serious disaster. God knows, only God knows what, what will happen to them, those who are indulging in all this. All right, so therefore, it is very crucial that we learn the lessons. Otherwise, today it is from China, tomorrow it can be from Mumbai, then, then the next day it can be from Berlin, next day it can be from Washington DC, it can come from anywhere. It can come from Japan, it can come from Vietnam, it can come from anywhere, Venezuela, Brazil, anywhere. It can come from Russia, anything can come out, right? So therefore, you know, it's very crucial that better late than never we learn the lessons and now of course when i'm making this video many people will hate this they will not like to listen they will say oh already there is so much <clears throat> fear and you are creating more fear no i'm not creating fear what i'm trying to tell you is that forget about others what others are doing if they are eating let them eat but let if you are watching this at least you try your level best that you should not eat okay and uh, you will also see that you will feel much better because uh, meat, uh, fish or eggs, they are especially in Rajogun and Tamogun, right? 
So when we eat all these things, then uh, the rajas and, and the tamas always increases in our body. All right. So our the f one of the first symptoms is your sex desire will go up. Okay. You 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 will not be able to control your sex desire, which means you will uh, you will start indulging in uh, watching pornography in the internet, or you you will start masturbating more and more, or you may visit prostitutes. You may you you, you may. Look at uh, even if, even if you are married, you may look to some other member. Okay, somebody else's wife, somebody else's husband. These kind of things can go can happen if you eat meat. And yes, it's terrible for the health. Also, it's it's worse. It's it's the worst thing that you can do to your body, right? And uh, what else should I say? In short, long story cut short. That is not how we should lead our lives so this is the first point which i wanted to make and the second point is ignoring all this it came from meat or it came from some vegetable from some bat or it came from humans ignoring all this why why do you think uh, it, it has impacted so many people at an internal level so badly no i'm not talking of economy or uh, external loss of finances or hotel industry tourism industry travel industry that, that and all is fine that has already happened and that is going on happening and it will happen more maybe unfortunately but what i'm saying is why 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 are people so much in fear in panic sometimes when i talk to people these days from last one week i have seen there is nothing there to talk the only thing they're talking is this virus 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 why? Why in the universe this is happening that one small thing comes up and we are so much, it's like we have, we have almost forgotten that we have a life also. Why this has happened? Because we are leading a very shallow life. That is the reason. That is why we get, we always get affected by what some uh, politician says. You know? So one politician from one uh, party will say something. And then you get very excited, yes. And then when some other politician from the opposition party, which you don't like, says something against the party that you like very much, then you get outraged. You say that, oh, what nonsense he is speaking, you know, I'll kill him. No, he can't say like this. How dare he say like this? No, if I would be there, I would have, you know, slapped him. So anything and everything what what your colleagues are telling about somebody you are, you're just gossiping what your relatives are talking about some other relative you're just gossiping so then that's why the next target is you all right so if somebody is gossiping with you about somebody then they will also gossip about you with somebody else all right so therefore we are obsessed with uh, following some fancy diets to lose weight, to look very attractive. We, we do a lot of exercise. We do a lot of yoga, so-called yoga. We, do, we go to the gym. We do a lot of aerobics. We go to sports, yes. We do so many things. But this, this virus has taught us that Whatever we are doing, we are just doing it superficially to impress others, yes, so that I look very good and I appear very attractive to the opposite sex so that I can impress them, right? More and more members will come and like my Facebook page. They will uh, like my Instagram page, all right? That is why we are doing all this. And then uh, we become uh, big uh, lecturers on health and you know, fitness and yoga and then what not we do. And then we are watching all these movies which are taking us to the dreamland, the dreamland, fantasy land, useless, uh, useless fantasy which can, which can never come into reality. That, that's why it's called fantasy because it is fantasy. <laughs> all right. You know, in the weekends, we are just wasting our days and it, it's, it, it is actually weekend actually. I hope you understood the difference. <laughs> it's not a weekend, it's a week ending of the week, all right? So it's, it gets terrible sometimes. 
I see people they are just uh, sitting in their couches and eating popcorn online. They are ordering food online and they are just wasting their weekends like anything. They are just wasting time watching TV, watching some, some just some random videos in YouTube, some comedy videos, some some somebody who is joking. They are just you know ha 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 ha. They are just going on smiling like this entire weekend. They are wasting like this. And that is why their lives have become very shallow. There is no depth. There is no consistency. There is no compromise with anybody. The divorce rate is going up. And people are, they are breaking. They are breaking relationships. Just uh, as they say, uh, love, love at first sight, divorce at first fight. So people are breaking families. They are, they are going on staying just alone. They are lonely, they are miserable, they are empty and they are hard-hearted. But still they claim to be independent. Okay, They claim that, oh, we are very strong, you know, we, we can do whatever we want. What is the use of that uh, so-called uh, independence? If you are just lonely, you are miserable, you are, you are just sitting alone in the home doing nothing. All right, so this is what we have done with ourselves and that is why either it was ebola or it was corona or it was sars or whatever it was these these things they come and they totally uproot us because if you see the uh, the effect of the virus it is not that uh, if, if you check the statistics it is not that anybody who has caught that virus they have died it is not like that it does not mean that if you get get this virus, you are going to die tomorrow. It is not. It is not such a dangerous virus that it will 100% kill you. No, it is not like that. But why people are fearing it so much? Because, because the lives are very shallow. Yes, you may die. If it is in your karma, maybe tomorrow you catch that virus and you die. But people have already assumed that, yes, he says, tomorrow I will get this virus and I am going to die. Why, 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 why? Because... The life, their lives are very shallow. Their lives are fully on the surface. There is no depth. They don't have good relationships with people. They don't have connection to God. They do not have connection to the scriptures. They do not have support of a spiritual community. Why? Because they are not putting efforts in this direction. The immune system is down. Because their life, their, their habits are totally crappy. Yes. That is why they are becoming more and more diseased. So this this virus, this virus in a way, uh, to whatever time it lasts, it should really be a wake up wake up call to humanity that we are at core spiritual beings, and we we need to do spiritual practices by which we can realize that we are spiritual beings ultimately. Okay, that does not mean you don't get married or you don't have children or you don't work. You don't earn money. No, nothing. None of that. You you do whatever duties are there. But in the morning especially, try to get up early and then do certain mantras which your guru or your uh, guide or your astrologer have suggested you. And then read every day 30 minutes. You know, books like Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. Or if you are from uh, Islam, Islamic tradition, you can read the Quran, you can read the Hadith. Or you can read the Bible if you are a Christian or any, any tradition. Read these divine books. They will tell you how, how to go beyond this material world. Yes, otherwise you will be stuck in this material world. And today, uh, 100 years back, there was some other famine or some other disease. Today, it's so maybe after 50 years, there's some other thing will be there. And each and every time you will panic and you will be living miserably. Yes, that will happen, all right? So take charge of your life, change your diet, improve your health, improve your immune system, cultivate good things, eliminate the crap, all this nonsense which you eat. Only then you will be well equipped. All the time, if you blame the government or if you blame doctors, it is not going to solve the problem. Yes, because they are doing their best. The doctors are doing their best. The government is also doing their best, whichever country it is. But just by government, politicians and doctors and bureaucrats, they gearing up this, this will not be sorted. 
maybe tomorrow after one month they declare that oh coronavirus is gone it's not there anymore but that doesn't solve the problem today it's corona then tomorrow after six months some other virus can come and, and we are seeing how these viruses are coming after one after the other so therefore uh, let us use this mayhem which is there in the society currently let us use this in a positive way to change our lifestyle to change our habits to cultivate the right habits to improve our consciousness overall and only then we will realize that yes material world as krishna says dukhalayam ashashvatam naapnu anti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata dukhalayam ashashvatam means it's a place of misery basically yes that that is why you see janma mrityu jala vyadi dukha doshano darshan this is there in Uh, that janma mrityu jara vyadi birth old age disease and death these four things are eternally there when when that is why when a baby is born that baby is always crying because the baby is miserable because he has had birth birth is not a pleasant experience oh now everybody else is laughing but the baby knows what uh, he or she is going through that is why the baby is crying yes otherwise nobody will cry then birth old age needless to say you have seen old people they cannot even walk they have their alzheimers disease is increasing you know uh, their people are lonely you know when they're old they 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 can't think properly their brain is not working you know they can't even say they are they want to pass stool or urine yes i know people they can't even say if they are getting a pressure from the front or from the back they can't say because their brain ca- cannot coordinate properly it's totally gone you know birth old age disease yes that's what you see what this virus has done and death of course that is the final destination all right so i'll end this by one statement once my guru maharaj was telling that when you were born you were crying and everybody else was laughing around you yes because you are born a baby is born it's like a big celebration so everybody is happy everybody is laughing but you are crying but when you die how you should die is that when you are dying you should be laughing you should be happy you should be smiling you should be giggling and the others should be crying because they should feel that as if Uh, such a great personality has left us what will happen to us how will we survive without him or without her what is the use of living if this person is not there with us all right so that is how we should lead our lives that when we go we are very happy we should have no regrets we should feel that yes i have done my best i have done my spiritual practices whatever my guru said i have done and now i am finished my body is finished so now my spiritual journey will start depending on what i have done i will get a higher destination or if god wants that i have done sinful activities i get a lower destination yes but we should be happy during that time we should not lament we should not think oh i wish i would have done this i wish i wish i wish i could have done that and we should be like that and everybody else should feel that our life is useless without this person and that is why they should cry all right so therefore our life habits should be such that they inspire other people to be- become better human beings not that they inspire others to stay the way they are already or even go down right and in this especially the leadership has to be taken by the parents okay the parents have to take the leadership because if you want your children to improve then you must set the standard that is what krishna also says in the bhagavad gita that whatever great men do ordinary people follow okay so therefore the parents have to take lead in this you have to change your habits of your life you have to make your life more regulated if you are doing stupid things then your children will also imitate you because they are from they are born from you don't don't forget that they are not descended from the heavens all right they are born from you your consciousness your body your blood your muscle they are born they are born from <laughs> they are you actually all right so if you 
degrade yourself the home that needless to say your children will also degrade okay and then they will do things which nobody likes about which i can't even speak here okay you can check the news you know so many crimes criminals there's you know, abuse there's murder there is torture there are killings there is extortions so many things which are going on right so don't uh, don't let your children become one of them all right sir and you have to take the lead you have to take the responsibility that i will change my life and i will change my family's life also right i will not let my family members go down in this degraded drainage of sinful material life i will not let that happen okay and for that you have to cultivate spiritual practices in your life and you have to do them gradually all right that is it from my side once again uh, take all the necessary precautions and do not panic uh, fortunately the doctors and the governments of the countries they they have been taking all the necessary steps and let us hope and pray to god that very soon the human race comes out of this by at the same time learning the lessons which this virus should have actually taught people all right so thank you very much and if you are new to the channel as usual then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me you can go to the description box below all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you very much